<clears throat> pursuant to uh, Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who have access to the meeting may do so by going to the Amherst Town Meeting, uh, Amherst Town Government website, www.amherstma.gov, um, uh, or the meeting may be available on the YouTube, on the Amherst YouTube channel. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, in the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the aforementioned Amherst Town Government website an audio or video recording <clears throat> or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. I now call the meeting to order. Hi. And I would like to inquire um, if anyone is recording the meeting at this time, the board, Amherst Board of Assessors is doing so. Um, so if anyone else is doing so, please let me know at this time. Okay, hearing none, we can move along. Um, so I will go ahead and share my screen with you so we can look at the um, minutes from the last meeting. Okay, did everybody get an opportunity to look at those? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve them? So moved. Okay, okay. second. second. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Sorry, just catching up with you. Okay, so the next thing on the agenda is our excise weeks. Uh, <laughs> he's got to make the appearance in every meeting. <laughs> All right. So I will make that bigger for you. Um, so this is the um, excise abatements for the week of January 4th through January 10th in the amount of $931.43. All right. Move to approve those. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. Next week we have is actually just one day. It's uh, January 25th, and the abatements are in the amount of $504.06. Okay. Move to approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> Okay. Then we have a, quite a long list of abatements for the week of February 2nd through February 7th. Uh, this was the beginning of our new calendar year um, excise commitment. So this is all of, most of this is the abatements for vehicles that are exempt. As you see the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, um, you'll see a church, um, more Commonwealth, Amherst College, uh, so on and so forth. And I will get down to the last page. So I take it the university vehicles are those, are those, oh, okay, those, right, those are. Those are exempt as well, university yes. University fleet, okay. Yes. Um, someday I'll get to the bottom. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> university of Mass has a lot of vehicles. Mm -hmm. Golly. All right, there we go. So this is in the amount of $77,653.79. So this represents cars that have been, um, these are vehicles that have been um, sold? Or? No, these, so these are vehicles that belong to the university and the Commonwealth right, so. and the town of, of Amherst, so on and so forth. Um, and being that those vehicles belong to those particular entities, they are exempt from excise tax. Right. Okay. Okay. So we, and so you have to exempt them every single year. So we're working on a process, um, which I can show you a little bit more about when we get to the actual commitment, which is next, um, where you can go in and you can mark these customer numbers. So if you see, um, does it give customer number? It doesn't give customer numbers on this particular report, but, it, um, it, it 
each each person that has an excise tax bill or each um, business has a customer number in our billing system. And what we can do is go in and look up that number and mark them as an exempt entity. So um, Commonwealth of Mass has a couple, I think, because there's just one little difference in how their name is is presented on their registration. Um, the University of Mass may also have that. So what we would do is we go into the billing system, mark them exempt, and it'll still show on our commitment, but we won't have to actually process an abatement for every single one of them like this. So, um, and I can show you what that would look like in our commitment because a few of them worked this time and for some reason, the rest didn't. So we have to talk to the software system, but just makes it easier, makes it easier on the eyes for all of you with the abatements, uh, makes it a much faster, more efficient process when we're actually putting together the, the commitment. And so the Amherst College, um, their vehicles are exempt too? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. All right. I just want to add something in this whole commitment. It's not just those. There is a mixture of some that, some that are um, handicapped, blind, anybody that um, falls under that are exempt from paying um, excise. So you'll see some of those in here if you span through, um, just in case you see that in your questioning. Yes. Yes. And they do, those who fall under those categories do have to provide us with proof of those things. Correct. Um, blindness certificate that's current, um, handicap plates. Usually they show an HP on them, so we don't have to do too much searching on that. Um, purple hearts, so on and so forth. There's there's certain, depending on the type of um, eligibility, there's certain documentation that you would need to provide. So is that an annual filing that those individuals have to do? Um, so they don't have to file necessarily every year, but we do need to get that updated information every couple of years. Um, I, I have usually done it every three to five years because a lot can change in that amount of time. Um, handicap plates, they don't ever have to, I mean, neither do Purple Hearts because it says right on their license plate that it's Purple Heart or Handicap. Um, handicap placards um, do not count as a handicap license plate. You actually have to have the physical plate on your vehicle. Um, handicap placards, the reason they don't abate the taxes on those is because you already have the convenience of being able to move it from vehicle to vehicle, uh, whereas the license plate is stuck to that one car. So, um, so those particular ones do not have to do an annual filing. Okay, move to approve those abatements. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okie doke. So moving on to the motor vehicle excise commitments. I'll make this a little smaller there. Um, this is the commitment that came from the registry for uh, fiscal year 2021. So this was any vehicles that were registered. I'm sorry, calendar year 2021. Um, this was any vehicles that were registered since the last commitment was issued to um, the town of Amherst until the end of the calendar year 2021. Um, so this is the commitment to um, accounting and to uh, the warrant to the collector in the amount of $11,554.23. And I just want to scroll through to show you this is the, um, this goes to the collector there we go. This goes to the accounting office. And then the final page you'll see um, was. Ooh. You're just going to see the you're just going to see the last figure, the figures yeah. on this, because there would be way too much to attach to this. Yeah. So this is just the figures showing that we put it into the computer system for billing. And here's where I mean. So you see commitment total number of bills here listed as 330 valuation and then excise tax, which is the amount that I just quoted, the 11,554.68, which is what we're committing. Then you'll see where it says total exempt and it only says three. In the future, all of those in the past, um, all the businesses, uh, Commonwealth, Amherst College, UMass, will fall under this category once it actually starts working correctly. Um, and so you'll see there's X amount that are exempt. That was their valuation and then what the actual excise would be if we were able to collect those. So and then it gives you again the final total. So the, there was 333 bills in this particular commitment, totaling this much in valuation and totaling 11,829.23 in actual excise tax if we were able to collect it. So we're only committing the top amount because these are the bills that are actually going to be received and we expect to collect that amount of money. So again, in the future, this will be much nicer. Um, there will be a lot more exempt 
on the um, the commitment, but I just wanted to, to point that out to you guys. So the software didn't work very well this year. For some right. reason, there was an issue and I don't know why. Um, there, I also got a phone call from Greenfield that they were having some trouble as well. So I don't know if there was just something in Munis <clears> that <throat> happened, which, which occasionally does occur. Um, but we didn't want to hold up mailing these out to actually try to sort this out beforehand. So we just did it this way. And in the meantime, until the next commitment comes, we're going to uh, work with Munis and try to get that fixed. So next year under total exempts, it would actually list the individual exempt number. That's right, uh, right, okay. right. So um, this particular commitment is small. There, there actually really could have been three, uh, but when we go to the next commitment, uh, you'll see that there's not as many listed because um, it, it didn't, didn't work. Um, but in, but again, in, in next year at this time, uh, when we look at the first commitment of the, of the calendar year, you could see that there are, you know, 7,000 bills mm -hmm. and there's 400 of them that are exempt, mm -hmm. for example. But those are by customer, not by bill. They're by they're customer. By, they're by customer, but it is the, the bill count. So you see the 330 oh. and the three exempt. That is, that is actually how many bill numbers oh, are okay. not. Yes, yes. Not yes. by customer, okay. That's right, right. We we mark it by customer, and then under that customer number, any plate that's attached to it will automatically be exempted. Got it. Yes. So, so we, have to, we have to approve our signatures on the on these, right? That's correct. So again, I'll just go back up um, here. So this is the commitment to uh, um, accounting, and then this next one here is the warrant to the collector for those particular bills for the remainder of calendar year 2021, again, in the amount of $11,554.23. And, oh, now I'm sorry, I see, I see in the word 68, and I see 23 in the number. Yes, we... We can correct that. So what we could do is if you're comfortable voting, we can do a vote with a friendly amendment what's, and we will make that change. And I will the, note that as well in the minutes. What's the right number? The one in writing or the one in the in, it's, in, it's, it's the 20. 23 cents and I will show no, you. It's, it's the 68. You're correct, you're right. I'm sorry, 68 cents. So here is the amount here. Mm. Let me grab the highlighter. Here is the amount that we will actually be changing that too. So $11,554.68. Which is, okay, all right. So can we go back up to the, the wording again? Can we go back up? Can we scroll back up to the wording? Yes. And let's just check this one as well, that it's 60. So this one would also need to be changed here because mm -hmm. that's got the 23 cents as well. So up to you guys, if you want to wait to um, to vote on this next week, we can make the, those changes, or you can vote with the friendly amendments to change the, the change from 23 to 68 cents. And I can put that in the minutes if that's what you're wanted to, wanting to do. From 68 to 23. From, yeah, 23, from 23 to 68. To yep, so it would be, this part is correct. And then this 23 here would just need to be changed. Right, okay, to, right. okay. So right. up to you guys, if you want us to fix it before well, you vote on it, uh, we can do that or I can mark it in the notes and we can fix it. Um, I recommend we go ahead and do it. Okay. okay. Um, so moved. Okay. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I will friendly amendments. Okay. So I will put that in the notes and I've also put in the notes what to change it to so that we have that for for next time. All right, so moving along to the next commitment, similarly looking, um, this is commitment number one for calendar year 2022 excise tax in the amount of $1,532, I'm sorry, $532,186.89. And 89 cents. So we will check um, the amount again to the commitment. Um, but so here is the, again, I'm doing yeah. the proofreading, and again, the, the amount yeah. of cents is not showing. Yeah, I just know, I just noticed that. Okay. 
Somebody, so what, I see that. What's Kim, correct. you might have two people look at these in the future just to catch each other. Yeah, um, we can do Sorry that for that. sure. Um, so let me skip over. This is the commitment to the um, the warrant to the collector. This is the commitment to accounting. And then here is the actual piece out of Munis. So that is the correct number. It was just missing the 89 cents in the wording. Yeah. Um, so here you can see a little bit more um, of the totals. So the total set of, of um, excise bills that we received from the registry was the 14,000. Um, understanding that this 292 is not totally accurate because some of those did not get marked exempt. Um, and so we were billing for 13,953 actual tax bills. Um, so when, when the, the, the uh, munis is actually working correctly, uh, we'll see, like I said, we'll see a bigger number and that will include those abatements that we had to do this year. So next year, it'll be more like, you know, 400 or, or something to that nature. Um, so just so, so you know what happened this time is the ones that didn't get pulled in on there for for the exemptions i had to go and do um what we call a mass abate and i had to manually um do the abatements on the, right. the ones that and those were get caught those were the ones that were just approved on that right. large sheet right yes so um so going back up to the top we'll look at these numbers again um again the uh page that will go to accounting for the commitment of one million five hundred thirty-two thousand one hundred eighty-six dollars and eighty-six cents. Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine cents. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so here is the uh, warrant to the collector, and I will um, also mark that that needs to be adjusted as well. Okay. With that, with that correction, um, I move that we approve our signatures on this. On this. Second. All Second. Those, okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And Kim, why are we seeing more than one commitment? So um, occasionally at the end of the calendar year, generally speaking, I should say, the registry will send us two commitments, one for the new calendar year and one for any excise tax bills that were, or any vehicles that were registered from the last commitment on. So I actually have this calendar that I like to follow along with. Um, just the way it's marked. It's just the it's just the the months, but just the way it's three months at a time. So generally speaking, we get an excise commitment every three months. So now you can kind of see why I really like this. So October, we may have sent out tax bills uh, for excise. So if anybody registered after that commitment was sent to us, which would be October, November, December, that's what the first commitment that we just approved would be for for 2021. And then this one here is fresh, starting brand new for the whole entire calendar year 2022. Anything that was registered as of the 1st of January. Kim, is this, this paperwork and process and everything very similar to what you did in Greenfield? It's exactly the same, yes. Okay, exactly. Statewide, everybody does it the same? Yes. Okay. Though I would imagine the number of exempts is a lot higher here, right? Um, not necessarily, because, for example, in Greenfield, we had the hospital, we had a lot of community outreach, um, you know, where their their actual vehicles were exempt. We had the, the college, we had, you know, we had a lot of um, Commonwealth of Mass, we have the jail. We have, so, it, you know, I wouldn't say that that Amherst is necessarily a lot more than Greenfield, um, you know, more than somewhere like Shootsbury, Leverett, um, sure. Shelburne. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, you know, looking at, at, uh, Hampshire County, you know, more than Pelham, more than Belchertown, maybe. Um, but you know, it, it's, it really varies, I guess, as to what is in your town as to what would be exempt. Okay. But I would say to be on the safe side, every town has some, because every town has a DPW, every town has a police and fire. Well, I shouldn't say that because that's not true, but most towns have police and fire. Um, so there's gonna be some variation of exempt vehicles in every commitment. So it says trailer. Do you have any trailers? 
um, trailers would be included in that as well. Um, so, so we don't, I don't know specifically if there was, you know, X amount of trailers in the commitment, but if anybody has, um, campers, um, pulling trailers like car trailers or anything to that nature that gets included into that commitment as well, as well as any others that come through throughout the year. Or well, anything that has a license tag. Anything that has a license tag, yes. With the exception of recreational vehicles, you know, ATVs, because that's a whole different type of registration. But if it's any type of registration through the registry of motor vehicles, um, like then, then it would. Yeah. Right, right. So that's that. Okay, so did uh, we do have a motion and an approval on this with friendly amendments. Okay. okay. I think we voted. I think we voted it already. We did, yes. All right. So moving along to the next agenda item is going to be our um, our. Here we go. Oop. You're doing very well, though. I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so this is our warrant to the collector for um, an omitted real estate tax bill for twenty eight. Ridgecrest Road. So just before we get into the amounts on this one, a uh, little background was somehow on this particular property, a button was unchecked, uh, which basically valued the house. So the preliminary bills, tax bills went out with the value of the house correctly on there. And when the final bills were generated, uh, it was just the value of the land. So when we noticed that that happened, we created the tax bill um, based on the house, basically, it, which is what was missing from the final tax bills. So, um, so the eleven thousand eight hundred sixty-eight dollars and eighty-three cents is what was not billed in the final tax bills um, that were generated. That, to that represents first. the house. That represents the house. Yes. Okay. So, how did that get caught? Um, in this particular case, the person called looking for their tax bill um, because uh -huh. they were they were confused that they had a credit and they didn't understand what it was. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes it'll just be a matter of going through the records and you happen to uh, come upon this property and you go, wait a second, something doesn't look right here. And you go into the billing system and you can find it. Um, and you, if, if that happens, then you would do the same. You would just do this, what's called an omitted tax bill or a revised tax bill. Um, in this case, it it should actually be, um, it, it is omitted because we missed it. It so wasn't no, billed. So no good deed goes unpunished, right? They <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's was, right. There, was there a mechanism to catch this if the, if the taxpayer had not called in? There's not, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, I mean... This was so, something I would say very rarely happens. This particular situation was very strange. Um, I actually, I'm not sure even how Munis was able to, uh, or I, I should say Vision was able to allow us to leave the parcel with this particular mm -hmm. button being unchecked. So um, not not quite sure exactly what went on there. So, um, so the so software doesn't catch it then. It, it it absolutely should, and mm -hmm. I don't know well, once how a, it once, didn't. Once a year, you should be able to run a do a run comparing last year taxes versus this year and see. Absolutely, yep, absolutely. Uh, you can do that, yep. And then if you see that there is something that looks like you know this value was you know four hundred thousand dollars and now it's only a hundred, what's going mm -hmm. on here? You know, and you should be able to go look at that. Absolutely. So I wonder how many of these are 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 in the system right now that are. I would be willing to bet there's very few, if not, this was the only one, because like, I, like I said, this is a very strange thing to have had happen. Okay. Um, when, I mean, when I showed Teresa, she was like, whoa, I've never seen that before. So um, I would say this is a very, very fluke situation where this happened. I feel like we should give a special award to this taxpayer for... <laughs> I know, give him a discount because he found it. Oh, if if it. only we could. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, I move to uh, should I I move to approve our signature on this? Um, this is a commitment, right? This is a commitment. Yes. This one it goes to the um, collector and and um, the accountant. Second. All Oops. those in favor. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 
Okay. And yeah, then- so Kim, Kim, if it's not too much trouble, can you run that report and just report back next meeting? I sure can. It's a little bit, it's a little tough to do it right now because I've already started making changes for the fiscal year. Um, okay, that's all right. However, though, um, what we should do and what we can do is in our process of finalizing our values for the fiscal year, we should absolutely run that report and just whip through it and see, you know, where there are differences and how much. Um, yeah, because we're, talking if we big, do... we're talking big differences, not just little exactly. Time. I mean, because there could be little minuscule things here and there on every single property, mm -hmm. but are, we're talking, you, saying, you know, like this, you... where the whole house was missing for the final tax bill. Are you saying there's an appropriate time to do that? Yes. Yep. I would say that would be um, in the fall time definitely right. the appropriate time to be able to do that. And I would like to actually, um, I'd like to do that to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Okay. Um, and again, not that this would ever happen, you know, every single year, this is a very fluke thing that, that I would say there was a bug somewhere in the computer system that just caused us to be able to move out of this record without being done. A little bit like when you're at a, when you're at a restaurant or a store and somebody gives you too much change back. Right. You know? Right. It, it rarely happens, but it happens. And hopefully you're honest and you would give it back. Yeah, that's right. All right. So I will move on to the next commitment, which you will see here for the CPA charge for this property. Um, when doing these uh, corrections, we do have to recalculate the actual amount of CPA that should have been charged uh, for this property. And that is three hundred and fifty six dollars and six cents. All right, I move to approve our commitment on on this amount of CPA surcharge for that um, for that property. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, so there's the commitments for both to the accounting office that you'll see on on there, both amounts. And it's listed on a line called omitted assessment. Is that right? That's right. Yes. Okay. Um, did you want me to go back up there? Sorry about that. I see it. It's, it's, yeah. I, I, yeah. Interesting to the line for that. It will be specifically in the real estate commitment here. Um, if we wanted to, I do notice that this is an older page for commitment, which no harm in keeping this. Um, there is others that, oh, I'm sorry. It's not listed under real estate. There is, it is actually said omitted assessment. There's others that just have it separated out a little bit differently, but Mm -hmm. No harm in keeping this one. I mean, it's what we're used to and it works just fine. Um, and then you'll see down here, we put the actual uh, CPA charge, which is something that we add to this, add to this um, commitment. I guess so. technically it should be down one more line, but that's all right. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, and then I think this is just the final page showing um, that it was put into the computer system. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I saw a different number there. Oh, is that the is that the CPA plus the? That is the CPA plus. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Also, um, this particular person because they had paid their preliminary bills as they should have, um, there was just a credit that was moved to make sure that they didn't actually receive the refund and then have to repay it. So that might have also been a little bit of that number right. there. So, um. All right, that's all that. Just lots of paperwork to go with that. Okay, so next agenda item is for 66 Wentworth Drive. Um, this property has been enrolled in chapter 61 with a forest management plan. Uh, I'm sorry, this, this has actually been enrolled in chapter 61A without a forest management plan. And this uh, particular owner decided that they wanted to uh, talk with a forester and create a plan for a portion of their land. So um, this is 36.68 uh, acres of a total of 47.31 acres is to be classified in this forest management plan for chapter 61A. Um, as you see here, it's the Amherst Poor Farm and the intention is basically just to continue farming. Um, and there's rules and regulations again with with meeting with a forester and the work that needs to be done on the farm to keep it actually farming. So um, this is, is this just- the, Is this the document you want me to come in and sign? 
this is the document. Yes, they, I, we would need you to come in and sign. There are three copies, right. one for us, one for the forester, and one for the owner of the property. So we'll need your autograph on all three of those. Um, and we'll just need the vote to approve this um, application. Kim, you're, and so actually, this move, from, this move from 61 to 61A? This was in 61A. I apologize for the stumble. This was in chapter 61A without a forest management plan. So it was just people farming the land. Um, and they've decided that they actually wanted to speak with a forester um, and make a plan for the property. So they expect to do this amount on this, this acreage and they expect to do this here and there. So if you see um, going forward, they have the application here that they have um, applied for, which they have to do every year. Um, and then they also have the actual plan. Oops, that's just another copy of the certificate um, and the lien that we've recorded um, because they're in chapter. So, Record so, we did, so we did the 61A portion several years ago? Yes, yep, yep. This has been, right. been in chapter 61A. They just wanted to have someone um, actually put it in the forest management plan, which it's not, it's not a forest management plan. I guess it's a, it's called a management plan because it can be for forest, but it could also be for farming, um, such as crops and, and such, um, somewhere down here is another copy of that is the plan. So you can actually see, so here's the actual management plan coming from the forester. So there's two parcels involved and they're saying that there's 23 acres on this parcel, which is the entire parcel. And then there's 13.68 on this other parcel for a total of 36.68 in this management plan. Um, and so this just goes- These are contiguous parcels. Um, I believe these two are, but in the case of the acreage amount, it doesn't matter at this point because you have to have at least um, for chapter 61A uh, in, a, in a management plan, you have to have at least 10 acres. Um, so both of those would qualify even if they were not contiguous. Um, so here you'll just see what their plan is, what they, what they expect to do um, with their plan. It does look like they are going to have some forestry happening on the property. Um, and then this is just a description of exactly what they're doing. What I was trying to show you was the map. Mm -hmm. So just bear with me for a minute. Let me go through all these. Um, and it will show you the two parcels and see there's a bird habitat um, in this particular one as well. Um, let me find the map. Sorry about that. So here okay. we go. So let me make this a little smaller so you can see it all at once. You so know, here, do you know what part of town this is? Is this, do you know where this is? This is, this is off. A, is this ahead. off Shea Street? No, this is off. Um, Pomeroy? Yes, uh, Pomeroy. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I'm thinking of a different farm. Yes, this is off Pomeroy. That's correct. Um, so you will see um, basically what's included in the forest management or the management plan is this chunk down here where it's labeled three. So this here, and then everything outside of this shaded area. So this goes along here. You do, you do that well, Kim. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like to color. I have a three-year-old. <laughs> Actually, you're ready to do NFL NFL commentary. I think. Yeah, right. <laughs> I do have that on in my house frequently. So. With the okay. So anything inside that yellow is going to be included in the management plan, and then here excluded area is the hay field and the actual house. So part of this house lot here is still being farmed. I believe if I'm not mistaken, it's a piece in the back as well as a piece down the side next to the driveway. Um, and then this whole back lot is still a hay field. So for some reason, they just decided not to include that in the management plan, but they're still gonna continue farming that as well. So um, this management plan excludes those pieces and they would just have to fill out their application um, separately for those two pieces rather than um, this whole thing. So that's basically what we're asking you to approve is that they continue farming the land. They just put that trunk in a management plan. So the management, the, the, the chapter 61 and 61 egg covers what's inside the yellow or outside the yellow? Uh, so the, the plan 
uh, that they've created with the forester is everything inside the yellow. All right, okay. Um, and then they're gonna still continue farming this area here. Okay. And this area and this area in and around the house, All but right. they are not gonna have that in the plan. So they'll just submit an application for uh, 61A for those parts okay. of the property. Okay. So another way to say it, everything's in 61A, but just the forest has a plan. That's right. There's, I think this might be fields as well over here. Um, oh. And I think, I'm sorry, you know what? I think that is the forest part. And right here is the forest part. You'll see those little things that look like trees. And I believe those are the actual forest parts. So those are probably the parts that they're going to cut wood on and the rest they'll continue farming uh, with whatever's already there, whether that be, I think it's called truck crops. Um, so it's anything that they can load onto the back of a truck easily. So as a practical matter, what did they, why did they do this and what effects, what effects has the management plan versus just leaving alone? Why they did this, I can't answer. I don't know. Um, some people will do it because, um, you know, they want to sort of protect the land from, from it, it, it's basically one step away from putting it in APR land where you are required to farm it and or leave it at its natural state. Um, this is just saying for, for the next 10 years, this has to be farmed. Okay. Do they pay the same taxes before and after? With the plan or without the plan, yes, they would pay the same taxes because it's still in 61A. Had they changed it to a different use, um, you know, that might change the taxes a little sure. bit, but being that it's the same use, it's going to be exactly the same. So why if they go ahead? I'm just gonna say, so why are the assessors signing off on this? I'm a little unclear. So, the, so the assessors have to approve any chapter applications that are submitted to the office. Okay. Um, and the basically the forest management plans need to be approved because the forester has created this. And we are basically saying, yep, we agree that this is gonna be farmed and we're okay with that. Um, and here's our signature. So that gets recorded um, through the, through the, um, the management. So if they were to sell this property, does the plan go with the sale? So the plan can go with the sale. So if they decided tomorrow, you know what, this is too much. We don't want to do this. We're going to sell it. They would need to let the assessor's office know in writing right away so that because the town being that the, the, the parcel is in chapter, the town has 120 days of the first right of refusal. So we can decide whether we want to purchase this entire property at market value or if we're okay with it being removed from or, or being sold. Um, and so then what would happen is they can sell it if they decide to sell it in chapter and the, and the new owners are going to continue farming, the management plan would transfer over to the new ownership. If they decided to sell it and the new owner said, nope, I want to put you know my house on there and I just want all that land to just be my backyard, yep. then we would issue the rollback tax Okay. for that. And I don't know, there may be some sort of a penalty because it's inside of the 10 years to remove it from that, that I'm not sure. And that would be done through the forester. Okay. Thank you, Kim. You're welcome. Okay. I see it. it. It's between Pomeroy on one side and Shea street on the other. Yeah, I guess I'm, I guess yeah. it's just fairly close to my house. I guess I'm, uh, yeah. 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 Let me, um, I can, I may have to stop sharing for a minute and then share again, but I can pull it up on the. Um... No, no, it's okay. I think, I, think okay. This is, okay. I, I get a sense this is near the KC Trail where it crosses Pomeroy, but I'm just, that's my sense of it. But I think you might be right. Mm -hmm. there's, yeah. a, there's a dip in the road before it goes up the hill to the South mm -hmm. Amherst Common. I think that might be where it is. Yeah, down near Plum, you know, the Plum Brook where. Yeah. 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 I'm looking at Google Maps here. All right. Okay. So uh, with all that being said, we just need a motion and a second if we are okay with uh, approving that. We're approving the, just to be clear, stating it for the public record, we're, we're, uh -huh. we're what are we approving? We're approving the, uh, the forest management plan. All right. For this particular parcel yes so moved second okay okay those in favor aye. 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 okay 
Excellent. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing temporarily here. Um, so uh, basically what we have um, next on the agenda is the principal assessor update. And um, I don't have a lot to tell you right now. Basically what we're working on is um, preparing a slide show for the residential exemption to um, possibly give to the council at some point. Um, we're working on um, trying to work with UMass to actually draw out all the buildings on our record cards and get a more accurate assessment of the, of the whole campus. Um, not, it's, it's being exempt, people would think, well, why, why is that even important? But if UMass comes to us and says, hey, we need help figuring out what our total value is of this area or of our whole campus, because we're trying to get a loan to do something and we can't give it to them. It's just not, not helpful, not you know, we are supposed to value exempt properties just as we value everything else uh, across the board throughout the state and probably across the United States. Generally, those get left behind and sometimes ignored um, just because we're, we're so busy and we usually are all short staffed. So um, just working on that. Uh, excise tax, as you know, is getting ready to go out as you've approved those commitments. So that's a pretty significant um time that that's going to take us to get all those bills out with the collector, as well as when they start coming back in, we'll have not only the payments through the collector's office, but any abatements that need to be done for people who've sold or gotten rid of uh, traded vehicles or anything to that nature. Um, and then also I've been working really hard on all the applications for overvaluations. Um, I have contacted just about every single person that's applied at this point. Um, How many is that? So, you know, I don't have that. I will get you that number while we're, um, while we're going through things, because I have a list of them. So I meant to a, grab that for you. you um, that is, uh, are you viewing that? Did you view that as a large number of people or? At first I thought, oh my gosh, but there's, <laughs> there's one particular application that submitted a, um, uh, an appraisal that's very large. So when I took that one out of the pile, I thought, oh, well, this isn't so bad. Um, I don't think there's, uh, from what I was expecting to see, um, I don't think there's as many as I thought. So I think that's a good thing. That, um, was it like, was it appreciably more than you experienced in Greenfield or? or how? No. no, no, I would say it's in and around the same, if not maybe less. Has the date gone by to file? Yes, that was uh, the 1st of February. Okay. Unless, of course, it was um, it was in the mail by that date in, in the post office. Then if we receive it after that, we, we are able to accept it so long as it has that particular date. Um, so I have my chart up. There were three personal property, um, three commercial and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, unless I've missed a few on my chart, which I'll be looking to see, there was about 20 uh, residential and or land, um, basically anything that was not commercial or industrial. So you not bad. To, you have to visit all those places? I do, yes. Um, there is, you know, there's some that, that there's one in particular where someone took a barn down so I can just drive by. I don't really have to actually go there and measure anything or look at the inside because there isn't anything to look at. It's gone. Um, <laughs> you know, so there's a couple that are, one specifically is asking about wetlands in the back. So I don't have to actually go physically look at that. What I did was contacted the um, conservation um person and she's helping me figure out if that actually is wet and conservation. So I don't actually have to physically go look at every single one of them, I guess. Um, I do like to try to actually put my eyes on the property if possible, just because a, you know, being, although I grew up here, I still, there's plenty of areas that I don't know. And I'm not obviously going to know each and individual house, you know, what, what's what there and all that. A part of a parcel's wetland. Um, so it depends um, on First of all, the significance of the wetland. Um, it also depends on how, um, you know, if it's a corner of your property, no, it's not gonna, it's not gonna reduce the the value at all. But if it's like, 
you know, if you, if there's a stream or a river, I should say a river running through your backyard and it literally cuts off a chunk of your yard and it floods every single year, you know, multiple times a year, sure, that would be considered and that might actually lower the value of your property. Uh, you would know, you just the land, that, not your house, but just the land. But you, would you ever get down to say that those 10 acres are wetlands all the time and there's zero value on it? Um, no. No, okay. Sorry, I was going to sneeze, but it went away. <laughs> um, so no, value would never disappear on a piece of property. It's still valuable. It's still, um, you know, it, to a point, it's still usable, whether it be uh, just recreational purposes where people can, you know, sit and fish if it's that that bad, or they can, um, you know, hike near it or something to that nature. So it would never be valued at no no value. Um, so anyway, um, those are the really the most important things that we're working on right now. We're getting ready to all the income and expense are still coming in. All the personal property form of lists are still coming in. Um, Teresa has been working her butt off entering all of those things in the computer. Um, and so we're really just kind of getting ready for more busy season. We're getting ready for, um, the cyclical program, which is due every 10 years, is due this year. So during our revaluation, which is also this year, um, they'll be checking in to see that our properties have been inspected as we're supposed to. Um, obviously, with COVID being the past couple of years, a lot of communities are seeing a little bit of a struggle with that particular um, meeting those requirements. The state is very... Um, you know, aware of that and willing to obviously work with us because there's so much, you know, we can't make people let us in. And especially during a pandemic, it's not comfortable for people to let us in. So they've been okay with, um, you know, virtual visits, which, which is something new. They've never been okay with that before. Um, they've been okay with people being slightly under the requirement for the cyclicals just because, I mean, there's only so much we can do. Um, but they'll be looking at that as well as our revaluation. So we're getting ready for those two things. Um, just, you know, day-to-day -day processes. Uh, and that's pretty much the most important things for right now. So do you feel like you have enough resources to do everything you need to do next six months to year? Um, I think so. Um, you know, we have, um, Roy Bishop, who will be coming to help us. Uh, we, we do have to put out a bid for the cyclical program and the revaluation. Um, I, I can assume that, it, that he will bid. Um, I don't know if anybody else will, but of course, at that point, we'd have a process to go through to see you know, who, would, who would win the bid. Um, but, it, but assuming that we get someone, assuming that someone bids on it, uh, and then seeing the fact that we have Teresa full time, we have Steven uh, part time, we have me, um, we have David at our fingertips if we need him, um, trying not to use him as much as possible because he's trying to be retired. Um, but if we have, you know, things that are happening that we're, I'm just not sure about or I want to get some background on, I, I have been able to reach out to him and, and I thank him so much for that. Um, so, so I think David's working for another town right now, isn't he? He is working for regional resource groups. So they're basically the same as Roy. Okay. Um, they just work in multiple communities. And actually, he's working in Greenfield. <laughs> uh, That's what I thought. I, I don't know yeah. where I read that or I don't know. So they, don't have an, they don't have an assessor yet? No. 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 Um, okay. So I do think that we're in good shape. Uh, yep. You know, could we use another person? Sure. I'm, I'm sure that we could. We, you know, we're always um, really, really busy. I mean, there's times of year that, that it's a little slower for us along with every other job in the whole world. But, you know, for the most part, we're usually pretty busy all the time. So could we use a full-time person instead of a part-time person? Sure. Absolutely. All right. Do you have any sense of when the council wants to see your slideshow? Um, I, I'm hoping to be able to get that slideshow to Sean and Paul by the end of next week. Um, totally understanding that the, the overvals have the deadline of April 1st. So I'm trying to get those done first, but, um, I think within the next two months, I would say to be on the safe side is when they would like to, to at least schedule something, whether that actually happens or if it ends up being three months away. Um, I think that's, that's the plan is to do it before summer. 
That's great. Yep. So, okay. Well, with all that being said, if there's no more questions, um, we can look at the calendar for the next meeting. Uh, let's see. Okay. So that we get exemptions or we will do exemptions and okay. um, overvaluations in our executive session. Got it. Um, so okay. our next meeting would look like it would be if we want to stick to Thursdays or Wednesdays, it would either be the 9th or the 10th of March. Oh, yep, that works. Okay, yep. Any preference? Uh, Thursday is good for me. Me too. Does that work good long term too? Then let's just do Thursdays every month and let's want to do that. Okay. Yeah. I think we had switched to Wednesdays actually on behalf of me when I was still working in Greenfield. So right. um, if you guys are okay with going back to Thursdays, I'm a, I'm completely fine with that as well. Good. And do we want to keep eleven o'clock? It's fine. So okay. nobody nobody's going to Florida. <laughs> Oh, if we're, we got Zoom, it doesn't, I'm up in Sugarbush today. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> the next like step is as soon as we're done, I'm on the ski hills. Good there you, go. <laughs> you, look like, you look like you're next door. Um, <laughs> yeah. All my right, then. My daughter's doing important work up there working on, on Sugarbush, Sugarbush forests. Really? She, yeah, she's, firmly? she's working on the, she's working on the ecology of maple sugaring. Oh, good Ooh. for her. Yeah, that sounds like a fun job. Yeah, got like 18 mm -hmm. inches of snow last weekend. So that's nice. great. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so yeah, so we'll we'll go to we'll go to 11 11 a.m. on March 10th. 10th. Right? Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Okay. March 10th, 11 a.m. As far as we know right now, it will be still on Zoom. And um, I suppose we have to we have to state a reason for going into executive session. Yes. So executive session today, we will be discussing two of the personal exemptions and a pile of overvaluations, giving and, and that we have enough we had, time. We had no one from the public here today. That's correct. Okay. All right. So I move that we go into executive session. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And it is 1152. Okay, with that being said, I will stop the recording unless anyone has anything else to say for the public session. Okay, hearing none, I'm going to stop the recording. Oh, 